Hello, darlings, and welcome back to one of the, I guess, fun parts of making clothes is actually the texturing of them, making them really your own. Now, I'm just going to show you the very basics of texturing. I'm not going to get down in details with bump maps and materials. Oh, wait, no, you have to do materials. But um, not like bump and shiny and all that jazz. This is just showing you how to do a basic texture and how to do a basic shadow map. So, yeah. If you want that, please look at some of our other videos. The one that's called, Let's Do the Bump, or Everybody Do the Bump, or something or another. But anyway, let's get into texturing our shirt. Now, we could texture our shirt and pants together, but for this tutorial, I'm just going to focus on a t-shirt, because designing t-shirts is more fun than designing pants. So, what we need to do is go into edit mode. And to go into edit mode, we're just going to press the tab key, and that's going to send us in there. And you'll see it's all highlighted, showing you the topology, and people will judge, but whatever, guys. My second life will just triangulate it back anyway. Your fancy quads into triangles anyway, so. Mm. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is, once it's all selected like this, I'm going to press A. And I'm going to hover my cursor over um, the garment, and I'm going to press L, and just select the t-shirt. Then I'm going to press P, and then separate by selection. So now my t-shirt, <clears throat> my t-shirt and my pants are two separate items. Now let's say when you separate yours, I'm just going to go back one and make these back to two. Okay. Okay, wait, that didn't work. Uh, about here. Okay, so now we're back here, and our clothes are, oh, still in, alright, maybe before edit mode. <clears throat> there we go. Okay, now let's say that if you were working on your clothes, and you press L, and it doesn't select one part of the garment, and it selects the whole thing, you can actually select it from the UV mat, which is why I told you to put a space between them. So, um... What we want to do is we're going to go down to the UV map side of it. And I'm just going to make this bigger so we have more focus on it. And you want to check this little button right here. This is the keep UV in edit mode mesh select and sync. Or just the mesh select set, uh, select button. Now you want to press this button and make sure that it's all grayed out. And it gives you the ability to select the mesh or any vertex of the 3D in a 2D space. So if you want to, you could just press the B key. And it opens up the box, and you can just select the shirt that you want, like this, and then press P. Oh, wait, no, no, not P on this one. You want to put your cursor in a 3D window and press P over here, and then press select, and you can do it that way. This is also a good way if you want to assign different material slots to your clothes. You can press B and select this one, and then give it its own material if you want to. But that's a whole nother thing. So let's talk about our t-shirts. So um, the t-shirt's the star here. Let's select those pants and chuck them over to another layer. We're done with you. Get out of here. Okay, so we have our t-shirt. And you can see that it is here and it's um, in the UV map box. But it looks a little small, don't you think? We can edit the map and make it bigger. The more space this takes up, I guess the uh, higher resolution it is or better it is because you can got more space rather than trying to put it all on one tiny little squig of, uh, of the mesh. We can actually make this bigger. But remember, if you edit the... If you did like we did before, whereas we exported the mesh first and imported it into Second Life, then we came back into Blender and changed the UV maps when we put the texture on the mesh that's already uploaded into Second Life, it won't line up because it has two different UV maps. This is why I said in the previous video that maybe I should have worked on the texture first before I exported it. But if you don't plan on changing this, you can um, just leave it as is and we can work on it. It really isn't going to change it that much. This is more or less aesthetics. <laughs> So if you feel like this is too small and you want to fill in all of this texture space, you can just uh, select it and then you can press Pack Islands and Blender will make it as big as it can. <laughs> if this looks ridiculous to you, 
you can uncheck the rotate one and have it go like that so it can fill it in more or you can change the margin and do like this but you don't want it to overlap you know because then that's bad we want to keep gaps in here so we can manipulate it some more so I like this better than I did uh, you know that <laughs> so this is a better texture map for me so now that we have our UV maps a little bit bigger we can make a shadow map so we have like shading in there now um, what we need to do is remove the color that we put in there on Marvelous Designer otherwise when we bake it it's going to come out a, a peach texture uh, peach color so I'm just going to make a basic t-shirt once let's put a basic shirt make sure I type shirt before <laughs> last tutorial I was missing the R alright so once we have our new texture in we are going to go to the camera well no we're going to go to the little world and we're going to turn on ambient occlusion and when we turn on ambient occlusion we get the ability to change the sample rating which is down here in the gather and the higher the sample rate uh, the smoother the texture will be the lower the number is the more grainy the texture will be I'll give you an example like right now but also the lower the number is the faster your computer will process it so let me go here and just hit bake so we're gonna switch it to wait before we bake we're gonna switch it to uh, ambient occlusion and then I'm gonna bake sorry we're all over the place now also mentioned that I'm in blender render for this so now as you see, whoa, we got this weird funky design. Um, when this happens, it also helps to just go back over to the blender, like the closed layer by itself without a body inside of it. And then bake it again. Bake. And you see, now we have this peach t-shirt. So if I turn on the shading to texture solid, you'll see this is our texture. Um, also, you notice the little dots and the grains and stuff that's in here? This is from a sample level that's at 5. Personally, I think this is good when I'm making sweatshirts and like t-shirts and stuff. I personally like the grain. It really is up to you on how much graininess you want your shirt or stuff to have. Me, I like it because my shirt is always linty. <laughs> good for sweaters and stuff. But, um, no. So, let's see. Uh, how about we take the grain. Let's go back to the world. And we up it a little bit from 5 to 10. Let's see what the difference is. Bake! Oh, when you get that error, just go into edit mode and then bake. You see, it's not the... It's smoother now. It doesn't have as many noticeable grains in there. And the higher it is, the, the more smoother that'll be. But let's say for some reason you don't want a peach color shirt. You want a nice white shadow map. You would just select the world, I mean the materials tab. And you will see diffuse. And you see it's the color we had in Marvelous. And you would just turn it all to 1. And 1 is white. So R is 1, G is 1, B is 1. Or you can go to hex and you just put all Fs and that will be white. So white is there. So when we go to bake it now... Do, 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 you see it is white instead of peach and that gives you a good template file to use for when you're working on your stuff so now that we have that done we're going to go and save it so you want to go back to the 2d window and pick image and then save image as and just for a precaution click the plus button a couple times and then go to your project folder and hit save some reason whenever I try to bake I always overdo it or I named it wrong and then it saves over it so it helps, helps to just you know tap plus a couple times so now we have our shirt we have a shadow map in here it's pretty good um, if you are one of the people who need the grid I want you to look up a Bianca Del Rio glare because there's people who always ask me for that dang gong grid so, um, what you need to do to get that is, I forgot, how do you get the grid? I think you select it, you go on the edit mode, and you go to UVs, and you do export UV layout. And then we go to our tutorial, our project folder, and hit save. 
Let me see. View by icon. And then you see we got the grid here for people to use as well as a shaded one for us to use. Yay! Okay, so we got that done. Um, it's time for us to export it and then we can get into 3D painting. So let's export this out as an OBJ and then we open it up in Photoshop. So file, export, OBJ. You don't want to put the day in there. You do not want to put the day. The day will cause your Photoshop to crash. Don't do that. Export it safely as an OBJ. So we're going to do this as painting shirt. Shirt. <laughs> Double S. And now it's ready to go into 3D painting. So last, pretty much the last one, because we're going to 3D paint it, and then we're going to slap it into, back into Second Life, all rigged and stuff. So see you guys in our almost, I want to say last video, and then you'll be off to make your own clothes. Yee, we're so close to being done.